think we are live. <laughs> Took me a second. <clears throat> All right, welcome to Edified Podcast. This is our what I think is our 19th episode. We want to uh, let you know we're coming to you on a Friday. Sorry about that, but um, George being out of the country, Terry was a little under the weather, so he gave me the 24-hour rule <laughs> after breaking fever. And the Facebook Live world, too. Yeah, there you go. So we didn't spread any germs any kind of way. Um, so we're coming to you on Friday, right after lunch, but sorry about the delay there. Um, we try our best to work with all of our schedules. But thank you for joining us. Again, our 19th episode, and Terry, I'll let you uh, tell our audience what we're talking about today. Yeah, today is a day that I hope will be a podcast that is something that you can take with you throughout the rest of your life. Uh, Really, we hope and pray that all of these, there's something in them that you can take with you, but we're not um, naive enough to believe that our words are going to keep in your mind, but... God's words, we should stay in our heart. And certainly, we want to do something that God's given us. You know, when, when I think about the, the defense we have against the devil, uh, in Ephesians 6, Paul talks about there the whole armor of God, of course. And the whole armor of God is very important. I mean, we've got to protect our, our minds with the, the helmet of salvation. We've got to protect our hearts with the breastplate of righteousness. We need to have our waist girded with truth. We need to stand in the gospel of peace. You know, we, we have the shield of faith. And then we always talk about, well, we have one weapon. And, and I understand that. We, we have the sword of the Spirit, okay? And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to penetrate the hardest of hearts. But there's a bonus in Ephesians 6 in that whole armor of God section that we have as an offensive weapon. Yep. And it talks about the power of prayer. Today, I want us to spend time talking about prayer. And here's why our hearts are are right here, and and we want to be real serious with everyone for a moment. Uh, We live in the community, and and we live in Mobile, Alabama. We we call it a community. It's actually a city now, but uh, Sims, Alabama is where our church is located, for those who may not be aware of that. And even though it's a city now and, and it's incorporated and such, it's still a community of people. You know, people rally around one another. And it's a community I've grown up in. Uh, Wilmer, you live out in Wilmer. It's not that far from Sims. And so between Wilmer, really the Mississippi line, to, to where we are right here, just a little bit more east of us is, is the city of Sims and the community of this area. And uh, there's a young lady who's 10 years old. Um, she went to our school here at Isaiah City Christian School. Uh, really personal with me because she was uh, really big buddies with, with my son, Bo. They were in, in uh, school here together when they were coming up um, from really the nursery to K3 prep. And um, she also with my, my niece, uh, Addison, as well. And, and uh, recently, this young lady, whose name is Aubrey Nicholas, has uh, been diagnosed with a tumor, um, and it's it's a uh, it's a very serious uh, cancer. It's uh, one that certainly makes your heartstrings uh, just melt. Uh, Aubrey, it, it, my little girl Madeline takes dance at at Melinda Lee's, and Aubrey also takes dance there. And and, and I just want you to know that I went to Madeline's. Um, what do you call that recital. recital? And you know that I'm a football coach. I'm a baseball guy, and and I love my little girl now. Don't get me wrong, but I'm a fish out of water, and so I'm watching this, you know, or what have you, waiting for my little girl to come on. And I look down, and I see this one little girl, and I know nothing about dancing. I know nothing about ballet and all this stuff, but I see this girl, and she's got it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best. And come to find out, it's Aubrey Nicholas. Well. Aubrey, between her dance, between people who know and love her in this area, people who go to school with her, she has impacted this community. And this community has rallied around this family. And they've asked for prayers. They've asked uh, at 328 every day, uh, which Aubrey's birthday is March the 28th, for people to pray. Um, I wear on my wrist, I I guess I call it a bracelet, I don't know what these things are called, but anyhow, it says Aubrey's Army. And so 
we want everybody on this podcast that's listening to please pray for the Nicholas family. Please pray for Aubrey. Please pray for all of those who have childhood cancer and places like St. Jude and so many others. But, but specifically knowing her, we want God to take it away. You know, we want it to take God to take it away. But at the same time, we also know that there are others who can benefit from prayer. And so with all of that on our hearts and just touching our hearts so much and and you know, we have people at our church that have taught Aubrey and and know them. I mean, it's just a really it's really impacted everywhere around here. But but that's what the podcast is going to be because Justin, God reminds us in scripture from time and time again that there is power yep. in prayer. Yep. And you're you're exactly right, and I'll touch back to the community side of things and I believe Sims is a city community of one high school, uh, yeah. Mary G. Montgomery. And there's a few um, elementary and, and middle schools maybe that are that are feeding into that here. <clears throat> so this really does have a community feel, and, and I don't know Aubrey and her family um, like you do. Yeah, you know, and I know that may not be very well, but you do have a relationship somewhat with them. Um, but it has been really inspiring to see how even her, as she has touched my life. And, and I've never met her. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I both have had grandparents pass away from cancer. And two each, actually. And to, for it to see it impact such a, a, a young child is really, yeah, it touches your heart. It kind of melts your heart, like you said. It makes us all emotional when we think about it. And I can't imagine. Um, so we do want to touch on that. But you're right. Scripture is filled with pray without ceasing. You know, and, and how we ought to pray. I'll, I'll go straight to that. Matthew uh, records it as Jesus on this Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon that, that we have written, uh, starts in, in chapter 6 and verse 5. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may see, be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that, that, that they will be heard with their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray them like this, and Jesus goes and gives us that, that model prayer uh, through the next three or four verses there. I think it's really important that prayer is something that's so special because it is our direct communication with our Creator, with our Heavenly Father. Right. And you know, communication is something that without it, no relationship survives. No relationship can make it. If you don't communicate to Michelle, you and her are not going to have a relationship, you know? That's that's right. And, you know, uh, somebody asked me the other day, uh, they know uh, wedding season is usually sometimes in the summer, mm -hmm. but this summer I, I had no weddings to perform or, or preach or whatever you call it. Um, but they asked me the other day, well, well, how's wedding season? And it's really ramped up. You know, we have like three or four coming up. And uh, with that, if, if I'm performing those weddings, you know, I encourage them to go through premarital counseling. And so I say all that to say this. Every couple I sit down with, um, you guys were with someone else, but I'm sure uh, Donnie, uh, didn't you? No, I didn't use Donnie. Okay. We use uh, Jim Brinkerhoff, which was okay, my college Jim. minister at Auburn. Well, I'm sure he did yep. the same thing, but but he would tell you the importance of communication. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what Absolutely. we talk about. I, I believe the number one problem in every relationship is not money, even though I know it's up there, but usually the money's a problem because people don't communicate. So with that, if if you and I have strife between us or quarrel or a fight or argument, whatever, it's probably because I didn't communicate well or you didn't or we didn't right. hear it well or, or right. what have you. It's the same with your wife. It's the same with mine. Well, guys, if it's that important to communicate with one another, how important is it, as you said, to communicate with God? God has given us this weapon through Jesus that we're able to go before him anytime we want. Uh, one of our friends... Uh, shared with us today, I, I didn't read the article, I just know the terribleness of it, but they're trying to, parents are trying to get rid yeah. of the prayer um, before at, a game. Before a yeah, game. Pre-game prayer. Yeah. yeah. For a football game. Yeah. yeah. 
in and, Alabama, high school in Alabama. Yeah, how's that worked out for the public school system? Not. You're right. Not you well know, when well. we take God out of something, you're only left with chaos. Mm-hmm. So why would we want to take prayer out of that? You know, the, the best things that we can do in life is, or one of the best things we can do in life is spend quality time in prayer with God. Mm-hmm. Now, I do want to encourage those who do go to the public school system, they can't make you quit praying. Right. You know, God didn't say you have to close your eyes to pray. In fact, if you're going down the road right now and you're praying, I would encourage you not to close your eyes. But, um, you know, if if you sit down at your lunch and you just look down at your sandwich, they don't know if you're praying for your food or not. Um, But here's the reality. The devil wants us to quit praying. Mm -hmm. And he's put, you know, we've talked about busy on here. We get so busy sometimes, the last thing we, oh, I was supposed to pray today. Well, I'll get it tomorrow. Right. You know, or whatever. You know, our kids don't have any problems asking us for things. We need to go to God and not just ask, but also think. And we can talk more about that in a minute. You and I, you and I are ADD, and we're going to chase a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> no doubt. With this. When you said that, um, <clears throat> I tell this to teenagers a lot of times because I think we're all guilty of this. And I'll raise my hand because I've been one of them. That is, that you will go through the day. You're busy, and you lay down. And you're like, oh no, I need to pray. Okay, yeah, let me finish my day with God. Let me finish my day praying to God. Well, I'm laid down, I'm covered up, I'm comfortable in the way my head on my pillow, and it's, dear God, thank you so much for this day. And you know, clock. and you're gone, right? And the next thing you know, you wake up in the middle of the night or you wake up uh, first thing in the morning, and it's, uh-oh, yeah. I don't remember saying amen. And I definitely don't think that's how we need to pray. You know, I know, yeah. I, I so, definitely try to pray without getting in my bed exactly, because it'll be over because, then. Yeah, you're right. It's difficult um, for us to, to remember that sometimes because we are so busy. But we need to make sure when our, our last words to God aren't while we're laying down and comfortable. We need to maybe go back to our closets, maybe get on our knees. And, and there is no, I don't think, correct posture, so so to speak, to pray. Because when we're told to pray without ceasing, I said, we can pray while we're driving. Yeah. We can pray while we're in a tree stand. We can yeah. pray while we're eating uh, before we eat lunch or while we eat lunch or at a football game or anything else. There is no specific place. There is no specific posture. That's exactly right. And and that's something that, again, man, our minds are going a lot. <laughs> Justin and I have a lot going on on Fridays. That's why we usually don't podcast on Fridays. But um, So my brain's going a 1,000 miles an hour because there's so many great things to say about this. Uh, but... But the movie War Room, mm-hmm. um, if, if you haven't seen it, it's a, a movie where this this lady has this room that she goes in. She calls it her war room where she goes to war with the devil. She'll put something up there and she'll pray over it and she'll pray over it. And, and you know, I, I'm not saying that that's for you, but, but I know for me. Um, you know, I don't mind telling you. Now, I, I'm like Justin. I pray. I try to pray without ceasing. And I probably sure. do because sometimes... Those prayers are, you know, just, dear God, be with Aubrey, for instance, you know. Yeah, and um, the good news is we have the Holy Spirit who will go and clean that up and present it to God no matter how bad we make it sound as long as, you know, we are uh, living in, walking in the light as Christ is in the light. But, um, you know, I, I know for me going in my closet has always been something that's good and I've always tried to... This is just me now. I don't have anything that Jesus obviously said, go into your closet and pray and and do it in secret and things like that. I try, because I am ADD, I need concentration. So I need to make sure that that I can just get myself away from the world so I can spend that quality time with God. Listen, I fail at at some things, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not... God's gift to the husband. I'm not God's gift to the father. I'm not God's gift to the ministry. But one thing I feel like I've always done well is I've had a good prayer life. And there are a lot of things I could tell you about that. And, you know, we might have time to get into that. But I say that to say this. Getting on my face in my closet, just me and God, man, there's been some powerful battles fought in there. There's been a lot of tears shed. But I've also seen God... You know, he talks about humble yourself and he'll lift you up. I, I've been able to be lifted up through that. I've been able to be encouraged through that. And that's, that's waiting on us. God is waiting to bear our burdens. Mm-hmm. And why would we not put them on him? You know, I, I agree with you. I, 
that's something I really respect about you is I think you do have a great prayer life and it's not a you don't go around you know shouting like hypocrites saying oh man hey look I prayed 17 times already today yeah. before I came into work you know I just hear you talk about it and you know some people when you ask them to pray for you or if something's going on the like, yeah man I'll, I'll be praying for right. you you know sometimes people are just they're just saying that Absolutely. you know sometimes that's just a reaction oh yeah we'll yeah. be praying and then we forget but I really and, believe, and they might have good intentions to sure. remember, you know. And I think you have a good memory when it comes to that, because we're in a group text with elders and all. And, right. and I know a lot of times communication it, through that is, hey, so and so's in the hospital. Right. Hey, you need to be praying for so and so. And I think that's really cool. And I'm just, again, chasing a rabbit, but I, I'm um, strengthening your argument. Not really, that was an argument. Your point that you do have a good prayer life, and I, I, I admire that and I appreciate that. You know. <clears throat> Jesus says there to go to your claws, and I kind of wondered why he says that. You know, I, back then I know they didn't have 70-inch Vizios, you know. <laughs> right. But if you think about going into our closet, going into a secret place in our house, there are four walls in our closet. There are no windows in our closet. There are hardly any distraction. There's clothes and there's shoes. There's not kids running around screaming. There's, there's not... Um, uh, uh, TV on, there's not mm -hmm. video games. I really think that's, that's really cool. Yeah. It says that because we go into a secret place and it is, it is, it is me and it is God yeah. and it is my creator and there is something that you just cannot take, you, you can't take that away from. That's right. It's, it's such an awesome point. But going back to the high school taking prayer away, I remember I think it was two years ago. We played Bayside, Mobile Christian played Bayside yeah. just last week. Um, and I believe it was two years prior to that because I know we played on two years in a row at home. Yeah. That one of the kids, their offensive lineman, broke his leg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the play, and I remember the ambulance coming on. I was on that side of the field at the time. We were helping get the gate open. The ambulance coming on the field. Well, we stopped that football game, as anybody does when somebody's injured. You go to a knee, everybody's kind of quiet, letting the trainers and doctors tend to that uh, injured player. Well, somebody from Mobile Christian, I don't know who. It's Mark Irwin. Mark Irwin. Who is our announcer? Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Asked everybody, hey, can can we bow for a second and, and pray for this individual? I don't remember the kid's name, but I remember that. I was so proud to be an alumnus yeah. of Mobile Christian and be mm -hmm. involved in Mobile Christian. It puts a lump in my prayer right now. Because I, I remember how much the Bayside community was impacted by that. And I thought... That, you know, here are two teams, really good teams, competing rivals, competing against each other, and we dropped everything. It wasn't everything. important it right It did then. not matter at that point, and it, we prayed. It mattered that to that team. young man and those parents. And yeah. that was so cool to see. And then, you know, again, another thing with Bayside, their uh, defensive coordinator, I believe. Is yeah. it Mark Lasser? Is that right? Yeah. Just, yeah, he was the head coach, and now he's a defensive coordinator. Just had a heart attack, and I, I knew him from golf, but I didn't know that's who it was. Mm -hmm. Um, he's our golf coach as well, who had a heart attack the other day. And it's just really cool that I don't know the guy personally. I've seen him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, that lineman personally. Right. But the fact that you and I can go by ourselves, so we can go with a group of people, and we can pray to our Creator for somebody. I mean, that is yeah. – you can't take that away. That is what, really What cool. at the game last Friday night, um, they, they rallied the kids together, and uh, it – Coach Cottrell led a prayer, and Coach Lassaby, the head coach mm -hmm. there, uh, led a prayer together with the team um, at four, mm -hmm. Coach Lasseter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it just shows you. You don't have to go. Yeah, we're Mobile Christian, and, and that's part of what we do. Right. But Bayside Academy is not a Christian school, you know, but, but it just shows you that, that getting together, spending time in prayer, you know, it, it just make there are things that are bigger than football. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things that are bigger than, you know, we talked about problems one time, our hurts or whatever. If we put all our hurts in the room, sometimes we want to take them back. Yep. You know, because our, there are some people's hurts that are a lot bigger than ours. But, but the reality of it is, is it matters to God. Mm -hmm. No matter how big or small they may seem to us or to others, we're God's children. He knows the number of hairs on our head. Mm -hmm. He knows our name. You know, that's one thing that was so powerful when Jesus returned, you know, he called Mary there at the at the empty tomb by name to comfort her, to let her know, hey, I know you. Just remember who I am. Listen to my voice. Now listen, God's not going to talk to us. He's not going to speak to us. 
But is he going to reveal himself through answered prayer? Yes. Does he reveal himself through his word? Yes. Does he reveal himself through nature? Yes. We can see God and we can know God is in control and we need to let him be in control. Right. And that happens uh, in large part with our prayer life. And we need to have the boldness and the confidence to be able to approach God with anything. Boldness is key. Yes. How about, so i got a couple of verses here I'd like to read, but I'm going to go to 1 John first and then come back to Matthew. But 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will or to what he wills, he hears us. Yeah, let's pause right there. Yeah, sure. That's sometimes hard now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I'm going to tell the story, I'm already a little weepy, which is kind of bizarre. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been sick for two tag days. Tag me in if you name it. Um, well, there's a lot going on yeah. in our community. For sure. um, but uh, I'm going to tell this story later. But I've mentioned here before in in my book and, and all that, but uh, it took Michelle and I seven years to, to get pregnant. And so I'll talk about that as I close the show today. But um, it was really hard for me to pray for seven straight years, multiple times a day, God, if it's your will, mm -hmm. help me to be a father. That's right. I did not want to ever say those words because I'm thinking, he may not want me to be a father. You know, He may not want Michelle... Now, I, I wouldn't have known the big picture. Now, ultimately, it worked out. But but that is a hard prayer sometimes yep. to pray. Yep. God, if it's your will, let this happen. But we've got to do that. Yes, because I think just our human nature side is, you know, God, I want to be very successful. And, you know, I want what I want when I want Absolutely. it. So you're right. It is tough to say, yeah. God, if it, it, we almost kind of maybe hesitantly say it sometimes, and I don't know, I don't think that's right, but uh, if it right. is your will, God, we, right. you know, we should be confident, we should be able to approach him, because if we ask anything that is according to his will, he will hear that prayer, mm -hmm. right? So <clears throat> Matthew goes on, or Jesus goes on in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 7, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. We've already seen in, in chapter 6 that God's going to take care of, care of the lilies of the field, the, the birds of the air. He's going to take care of our needs. He, we just have to be willing to seek him first and to ask him, right? So everyone who asks receives and, and who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his sons ask for bread, will give him a stone? Or ask for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give, give good gifts to those who ask him? We need to have the confidence to approach God, knowing that, God, if I'm asking, and as long as you're willing, he's going to take care of me. I'm not going to ask, uh, a ask for bread and him give me a stone. He's going right. to give me the gifts, that, and he's going to make sure that he meets my needs. He knows me far better I don't know myself. The, the way I've illustrated that, let's say Riley, who we all, I mean, Riley's just... Nose picker. <laughs> no, don't go there, Justin. Sorry. Justin Barnes. I'll pray for her. <laughs> pray for you. Anyhow, we're not going there today. But Riley is precious. Grayson is too, but Grayson is, I mean, not old enough to ask for stuff, stuff sure. except, you know, maybe more puffs or something. I don't know. No, but I can't ask. <laughs> ah, ah. He screamed. <laughs> uh, but Riley can. But let's say she said, you know, you talked about the 400 kitchens you got. I mean, she must have a pretty good prayer <laughs> life herself. But, but, but let's say that, that she said, Daddy, I, I want you to give me this. Okay? And it's a Christmas present or a birthday present. And maybe it's a, you know, a new, I don't know, troll. bell doll or troll right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, a troll. Mm -hmm. And and you you say, okay, Riley. And you give her a present, and she opens it up, and it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> I mean, who does that? Right. Who's the sick and twisted person that would do right. We wouldn't do that. Yeah. That sounds so horrible for me to even say, mm -hmm. to put something deadly like that. Well, God's not going to do that to us. Yeah. And we need to think, if we're not going to do that to our own children, yeah. God's not going to do it to us. But let me go back to the will part. Mm -hmm. Because there may be some out there that you're saying, well, I've prayed, you know, hesitantly, God, if it be your will, and, and the prayer hasn't been part of God's will. Well, I want you to know God still will not let us down. And he did this with his own son. 
Because if you'll remember, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, I don't know if there's ever been a more fervent prayer ever than what Jesus went through. Now, you've got to remember, Jesus was God, but he was also man. So he understood the spiritual, he understood the big picture, but he also understood the physical. He knew the cross was before him. He knew the pain, the agony, the separation from his father. And so he went to the garden with friends that couldn't even wait up with him, and he prayed fervently so much that the sweat, uh, some kind of you know scientific way, the blood capillaries or whatever in your, in your head could burst, and he sweat blood. Mm-hmm. He was so anxious with this, so, you know, dreading it, I guess. God, please let this cup pass from me. But what did he say? Not my will, but yours be done. Well, well, it was not God's will to take that cup. And you understand the cup from the Old Testament about the bitter cup that people had to drink. He had to drink that bitter cup, if you will. But, but God would not, he knew it was best for you and me and for everybody else for Jesus to go through this. But what did he do? He didn't leave Jesus there. He sent an angel. And the angel strengthened him. So even though he said no, Jesus, he gave him what he needed to get through the cross. And God may say no, but he's going to give us the strength to get through those times. And I think we've got to remember and we've got to trust and we've got to spend time turning it over to God. And how short of a prayer was that? It wasn't long, right? Right. It wasn't filled with all this wordiness. It was straight and it was to the point. And I, I think sometimes we feel... That and maybe even in our worship service, we feel like, oh well, this is the opening prayer, yeah. this is a close prayer. I've got to get a good one. <laughs> this you know, may be the last time they ask me to right, do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, don't we just need to go up with the mindset that I'm going to pray whatever is on my heart, whether that's 15 seconds or, or three minutes or seven yeah. minutes or whatever. There is no time. Limit. You know, I had somebody tell me one time, and, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, go go. <laughs> I had somebody tell me one time, Terry, you're a really good opening prayer guy. But not so much a good closing prayer guy. Everybody's already squiggling in their seats. And <laughs> because you're standing up. They're like, Terry's long-winded. We, I, I, I can take a hint, you know. Right. But anyhow, yeah, I, some people do have a lot on their heart. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that's me. I just have a, I, I talk a lot. Well, there's there's one one guy, and I know he's going to be listening to this podcast. So I'm not, I'm going to say his name, but when I know he's down for a prayer, I know it's going to be... It's going to be a longer prayer, but it's going to be one of the most heartfelt prayers. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. And absolutely. You know I mean, I, I soak that up. And I know we're supposed to pray with the individual. Yeah. And, and you know, you can be sitting there amening in your head or, or praying along with them. But, uh, but I, I like that. I love for the ones that you can tell that it is not scripted. You right. know, some people, absolutely. you go up there, they'll pull a paper out, and I don't want to be, I'm not sitting here trying to judge anybody, because I yeah, know people yeah. get nervous in front sure, of others, sure. right? So that's, some have to do that. I, I've, I've done that when I was a teenager before, you know, write some thoughts down, just, yeah. hey, if I forget, I need to make right. sure, or some people will write names down, make sure they pray for sure. them by name. I think that's incredible. But just the can prayer exactly. that, you know, somebody pulls out, and, right. you know, God is great, God is good, or whatever. Sure, you know? and it's definitely got to be heartfelt, and you know, Jesus tells us that we've got to become like the little children. Right. And I know y'all pray every night when, when we try to let Riley pray for our food and pray oh, for man. different things from time to time. And I I love the prayer. I'll tell you, Tucker Hatcher has the best one. So awesome. I'm probably going to forget it, but every time he prays, he says, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for food. Thank you for Jesus. Yeah. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. And it is incredible. I mean, it gives Tucker's me chills. three, by the way. Right. It gives me chills every time. And I, I go up to him and give him a fist bump or a high five because he does such a great job. He with wants it. to do it, too. He, yes, That's every really time. Cool. He looks yeah. at his daddy. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. And I love to hear Riley pray yeah. because it's just so sweet and innocent. She'll pray for, um, she'll say, Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for Harper Had, her cousins. Thank you for Mommy, Daddy. Grayson, Harper Had, Rai Rai, Harper Had, 
food. Harper had. I, I love mean, it. It is Harper had five it. or six. I just times. see God and smiling at that. It, and it's so it's so innocent. It's so awesome. I'll tell another story of a, a kid that came to Mobile Christian. Yeah, you know, was at Mobile Christian. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't make the finances. Yeah. C- come is able to come back. Um, and he prayed that first. Well, football well, practice. hang on, hang on though. Before that. He cried every day going to that. his other school. Exactly. He wanted to be a mobile Christian so bad. He, well, he, we prayed about it. He, he prayed back. about it. He got to come back. And he comes back in that first football practice where, I mean, again, I love to see these fourth, fifth, and sixth graders mm-hmm. praying because you never know what they're going to say. Sometimes they struggle, and, and that's fine, but they're really thinking about mm-hmm. it. You know, it's not scripted with them. And he says, God, thank you for letting me be a mobile Christian school. And I I melted over that, too, just because, you know, it's a school. But we know what kind of impact that school has had on our lives and our family's lives. And it's just really cool to see. And I'm 30, and you're 40, and you and I can go in our closets and pray yeah. just like that. I mean, that's mm-hmm. those are examples that um, I'm so glad that I've been around. Yeah, um, man. I am really struggling with emotion <laughs> today, but but my kids, you know, we every day we try to pray before we leave the house and before we put our heads on our pillows as a family, and um, we will take turns in that prayer. And uh, Bo is just—I mean, he's a champ. I mean, he really is. He's done it a lot longer than Madeline. Uh, he led a prayer at—he's uh, the chaplain of the National Junior or National Elementary Honor Society, and. In front of all those grandparents, all those kids, he, he led a prayer today. And we asked him, do you want to write it down? He said, no, sir. And it meant a lot because that means he's used to praying, mm-hmm. you know. But but my little girl, I'm telling you right now, son, Madeline can pray. and uh, I can imagine she's got a lot of emotion behind it, too. You, you know? Yeah, and just the things she remembers. Mm-hmm. I mean, from God help Daddy to quit being sick. You know, to Aubrey Nicholas, to <laughs> I'm struggling, but um, you know, it's just really, really powerful, and I know, I, I mean, I can see why God said, "Let us be like little children." Their hearts are so tender, they're so unique, and they're so I don't know. It's, it's just, just yeah, it's pure. And uh, if you're not praying, you know, why not? Why not? It's one of the the ways we can beat the devil. Absolutely. Um, you know, I love the way you opened with that because that was, I mean, you knocked it out of the park with, with the intro on, and that, that is another tool. It is another tool that we can go to our Father, and we've talked about in confidence, in secret. We don't parade around like the hypocrites do, wanting attention. Right. We just go, and it, it's me, and it's him. That's right. And, and we pray like kids, and I, I love kids and their innocence and purity because they don't care. Now you, you see a kid, and remember when, when we were kids, you go to the golf course and you hit a bad shot or you <laughs> chunk it or you completely miss. You know what a kid does? He looks right back down there and swings again. You know what an adult does? He looks around yeah. saying, uh-oh, who yeah. just saw me? You know, my they, image is tarnished. Yeah. And then they lie yeah. about their score at the end. <laughs> exactly. So when when I do elementary chapel at Mobile Christian, I, I try to compliment the, those kids every time I get up because the way that they sing is so much yeah. energy, so much yeah. passion behind it, and it's loud. Yeah. And I tell them, do not ever lose that. Amen. Because when we get older in the middle school and the high schools, and now as adults, we get a lot cooler. Yeah. You know, and, and we try to, to be cool, and I don't want to show all this emotion and ah, prayer life, whatever. We forget that. And I want to pray that. I want to be more like Madeline and more like Riley and, and pray more like Tucker, that it's it's so small, it's short and to the point, but it's impactful. That's right. And it's meaningful. That's right. I don't I, know where to go from here. Well, I, I, I do. I, I mean, I know you're thinking. I, I just, did you want to say anything else? No, close it. Okay. Close it. Um, I'm going to close with something that, that I've used, and I may cry. You know, I've already done that some. Um but but this is really, it changed my life, folks. And it changed my prayer life. Justin, you know, he said some kind words about that. But um, I, I want you to know this is why. Uh, this is when I started going in my closet. 
Um, and it's going to take a little bit, so if you can just hang on with me. But um, Michelle and I, Justin Wilkerson is a senior in our youth group, and I love Justin. Justin is a young man that I hope my child, my son, will turn out like, and I hope my little girl will marry somebody like. Um, he's a great leader, has great parents who pray for him, and Justin's story of being here is an answered prayer in itself. And so I just see God's hand in all this. Well, I say all that to say, uh, Justin was born uh, not long after I was back here full-time out of college in 1999. And uh, I went to the hospital to see Justin, and he was the first baby born in my time here. And Michelle and I were going to wait a couple years, and so I held Justin, and I was in love. I mean, he was just the cutest little thing, and He's a big thing now, but he's a big tall still guy. Cute, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Justin, if you're listening out there, you're still a cute guy. But anyhow, uh, he was a cute little baby, and uh, I was really close, still am, with his mom and dad. And they had three, um, Kent had three girls from a, a previous marriage, and they were in our youth group. And so I was real close with his family. And so Justin came along, and he's a boy, you know, he's their boy. And uh, I just, I went home, I said, Michelle, I said, I'm ready to have a baby. Yeah, I'm ready for us to have a child. And so we prayed about it and all that. You know, of course, um, it, it, nothing, you know, she didn't get pregnant, you know. And you think, okay, well, it'll take a little while. Well, that, that take a little while took seven years, you know. We clicked along and, man, just every doctor, uh, you know, every doctor we were recommended to, the, the, the pros in Mobile, Alabama, we've seen them. Um, every fertility specialist, every, I, I'm telling you, you just, you know, from blood tests and, and everything else, you just, you go and you just wonder, is this going to happen? Is it going to happen? Well, anyhow, you know, you, you talk to people, you know what they tell you? Pray about it. Well, man, I've been praying about it. You know, I pray about it fervently day after day, hour after hour, month after month. It's just disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. Well, we we did some fertility stuff, Michelle and I. And, and in fact, you know, hey man, we're I'm not I'm not ashamed to tell you we're still paying it off. <laughs> you, you know, I I charged this stuff up on my credit cards. I didn't have this kind of money, and it's expensive. And but you know, you want to have a baby so bad. And so, uh, we made a deal. Michelle's almost a full year older than me, and so I just turned forty. So she turned forty one just a week later, and. Uh, when we decided, you know, around 28 or so, that if by the time Michelle turns 30, if we don't have a child, we'll, we'll adopt. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just knew it was expensive, you know, it was expensive um, to do that. Um, it's just the way the country's set up. It's really hard to do. And so um, we tried our last money that we had was on what's called an IUI and uh, we had then done several before when Michelle would have to give I don't want to go into a lot of detail about it you know personal stuff but she'd have to give herself a shot in the belly because I'm too pass out risk to do it and uh, anyhow it was just a really hard situation and uh, so I was at football practice uh, summer workouts. I was coaching with Tommy Watson, who's a really good friend of mine. and um, Tommy was a head football coach, and she went to the doctor after that last one, and, you know, we got so much prayer. This is it. This is it. She's 29 years old, you know, and it was negative. The test was negative, and Michelle was devastated, and so I was devastated. And so I remember going to, to Coach Wasden and I said, Coach, you know, I, I need to go home if it's okay, and and I explained to him, and, and he, you know, he, he said, I'll be praying for you. And I'll never forget that. That's just pretty cool, you know, to have your guy you coach with, who's also your boss at the time, to tell you that. And anyhow, long and short of it, that night I go home and, and I, you know, try to comfort Michelle, but I was also a youth minister. And so uh, a local church in town, Creekwood, was having a vacation Bible school, and a good friend of mine, Ricky Butts, who I worked also with at Mobile Christian, <clears throat> He was there. I told you a long story, y'all. But um, anyhow, I, I needed to take our youth group to this event. I did not want to go. I'm just going to confess to you. You know, probably if I had done it over again, 
if I'd felt I had a little more job security, maybe I'd have said I'm not going. But but I went. And, I, and, and Ricky, I love him to death, but he's teaching on Hezekiah. I'm thinking, oh, my word, this is awful. I need to be home with my wife. I don't want to. But, man, the more you talk, the more I'm like, Terry, you need to get this. Well, here's where he went with it. In 2 Kings 19, um, Sennacherib is king of the Assyrian army. Hezekiah is a good king in a long line of bad kings for Judah and Israel and such. But uh, Sennacherib is, is really taking over the world. The Assyrians are taking over the world. And essentially he says, he sends word to Hezekiah in a letter, in a you know, scroll, sealed you know, and everything. He has it delivered, says, hey, essentially I'm coming after you next. Hezekiah, you're next. Well, Hezekiah is a king, a good king. And so he recognizes God as king of kings. And so what does he do? You know, he's heartbroken over this. I mean, I don't, you know, he's concerned about his army. He's concerned about his people. He's concerned about his nation. So what does he do? He takes that scroll. And I remember Ricky driving this point home. And you can read it in the text. He spreads the scroll out. And he prays. And essentially, it's a beautiful prayer. Look it up. But essentially, he says, God, I don't know what to do, but I recognize you as God. And I'm spreading this out. I'm giving it to you, Lord. Well, you know, at the amen or whatever, the next thing we know is how God answers the prayer. God sends the, the commander, you know, the, the, the angel of the Lord. He sends the angel of the Lord. And that angel of the Lord kills a hundred people thousand of the Assyrian army and then Sennacherib's own family turn on him and kill him but I took from it that phrase spread it before the Lord all right let me fast forward a little bit so I go home that night after we get the kids home and everything Michelle's in bed and I get down on my face it wasn't in my closet. It was on my, my floor. And I just said, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I felt like we've tried to do this on our own, but I'm spreading this out before you right now. Okay. Fast forward to August. Um, and it was really the, the 22nd. Michelle knew on the 21st. But on the 22nd, she, the 21st, she took a pregnancy test, okay? The, the 22nd, she gave it to me. It was positive. I, in the shower that morning, I was just bawling. Um, got in my closet that day forward and prayed every day that everything would be well. Um, on her 30th birthday, remember, we said, you know, when she turned 30, her 30th birthday was August, is August the 27th, but it was on a Sunday that year. I announced from the pulpit that Michelle was pregnant. Now, that ended up being a very good story for us. But here's what I want you to take out of it. Whatever you're carrying right now, don't carry it any longer. Go spread it out before the Lord. Folks, God's waiting. Why are we waiting? Let's close out with a prayer. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your son. God, he also uh, not only gives us the hope of salvation, but he gives us this avenue of prayer. God, we pray that this podcast has been has been encouraging for those who are listening. It's edified those who are listening. But Father, we pray that you've been, been glorified through it all. Father, we, we know there are many right now that, that, that are burdened. Father, we pray that, that with confidence we'll come before your throne, knowing that if it be your will, you're going to hear our prayers and answer them. Father, we just pray for those who are hurting right now, but especially, dear Father, we ask you to be with Aubrey Nicholas. We ask you, Father, to take her 
tumor away. Dissolve it. Rid it from her body, Father. We know that you have the power to do that. But Father, no matter what, give this family, please, what they need through this very challenging time. Father, we pray that the others out there who are hurting, that you'll just be with them. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to be able to share your word through a media outlet like Facebook and through iTunes and everywhere else. Thank you for Justin. Thank you for George. Thank you for those who tune in and listen to us every week. We ask your blessings on this country, Father. Be with our president. Be with those who are making laws every day that they may be against you. We pray, Father, that these kinds of things will change. That our country won't hate. That our country won't see color. That our country, Father, will, will just know how, how important it is to love the way you love us. As Justin, my buddy, says, even when we're unlovable. Thank you for the power of prayer. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for listening.